Hi, I'm Pastor Dave Twist from Greener Assembly of God. Hey, thanks for coming to worship with us today. Um, if you're in the Scranton area, you don't have a church of your own, thanks for worshiping with us today. If you're from outside the area, welcome. Uh, we, we enjoy uh, being with you here today, and I hope that the Lord speaks to your heart and just ministers to you. Again, thanks for coming and worshiping with us today. May the Lord bless you. Glad that you're joining us online, and uh, we wish that we could be together in person. But until then, we're going to keep singing, we're going to keep worshiping, and uh, and we're just going to go ahead and give honor to the one who is worthy. So wherever you are this morning, wherever you're watching from, we're glad that you're with us, and we're going to go ahead and sing to our Savior now. Amen.
you're going to prepare a place for us, Lord. That you would not leave us here alone, but you would send your spirit to lead and guide, to comfort, to restore. But that you would not stay in that place either, God. Lord, that you would come back for us one day. You would call us unto yourself. Oh God, that we would meet you face to face. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are faithful and true. Lord, what you have said to us in your word, we can believe without doubt or fear. You are coming back. That you are coming back soon. So we lift our eyes to you this morning, Jesus. Renew our faith. Renew our trust. Let us see clearly, God. The words of your promise. Who you are, Jesus. Good morning, I'm Pastor John, and as we enter into our sixth week of online services, we've received so many comments about how the Lord is touching people through computers and phones and all the other means. So thank you for those comments, and thank you for continuing to meet together with us. At this point, we're still ministering here in the church as we continue to do renovations and improvements, as well as ministering online. Well, thank you for giving to the ministry of the work here at Greenridge Assembly of God. If you'd like to send a check, you can see the address at the bottom of the screen. You can click online giving right on our website. Thank you so much for being faithful. Hey, good morning. Uh, on this beautiful uh, spring Sunday morning, uh, I know the weather might leave a little to be desired, but hopefully where you are, it's warm and uh, sunny, at least inside your house. Uh, thanks for <coughs> worshiping with us this morning. Uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, the presence of the Lord in our worship time. Uh, it was just an exciting time uh, to praise him. And we're thankful for spending time in his presence uh, here together. Corporately, <clears throat> even though we may be separated, uh, we're still together worshiping, one church worshiping together. Uh, so thank you for being part of that this morning as we uh, get back into the word of God. We're going to pick up where we left off last week <clears throat> as we sort of looked at this idea of the Lord's return. This is a time for us to refocus ourselves. Um, and God has granted us this time of Sabbath, perhaps. And so it's time for us to sort of refocus ourselves and see <clears throat> what the Holy Spirit is, is talking and teaching to us at this time. Uh, this has been a time of incredible shaking uh, all across the world. Uh, and so the economies of the world, the governments of this world, the people of this world have been shaken. You and I have been shaken to a degree. And uh, you know, when you think about it, some of the things that have happened, um, <clears throat> there's a number of our folks that are, that are unemployed. But we're, we're, we're thanking God for his provision in the midst of all that as well. Uh, you know, our high school seniors, uh, you know, no senior class day, no prom, no nothing this year for them. I think of Antoinette uh, in uh, Saavedra and George Lucopoulos, you know, my niece Maddie uh, Taylor, uh, you know, having no, no special senior year. Uh, you know, a lot of things have been shaken in this world. Uh, you know, uh, Ronnie Kurtavich and and his, uh, his, his papa and his uncle, uh, they bought a house just up the road here and they were working on it and neighbors called and reported them, you know, or somebody who was a busybody reported them as working in their own house. Uh, and the next thing you know, the police were there and they had to stop working. So it's, it's a time of shaking that's happening uh, in all of our lives. And, and uh, you know, Jim and Diane Ross and Rachel uh, and Madison, you know, they contracted uh, COVID-19 and it was a shaking for them, but God has brought them through. You know, God is faithful, and he always is. He always will be. He can't be anything but faithful to his people. 
And so in this time of shaking, um, let's refocus ourselves on the goodness of God, on what he's doing, on his goodness to us, and also his promises to us. And his promises are for us for the right now, but they're also for the what is to come as well. And so this morning, as we, we get back into this refocusing on the return of Jesus, let's not lose, lose sight of this in the midst of all the things that are going on around us today. Um, we left off last week where it says, Take heed and watch and pray, for you do not know the time will, when, when the time will come. And so, um, and I get that, and I understand that there's, you know, even as a preacher, not everybody wants to hear about the Lord's return today. Um, and so, you know, I'm not, I'm not preaching this message because you've asked me to do this. I've, I'm preaching this because this is where the Holy Spirit has directed me to go. Uh, with this time. And so, uh, you know, we're going to uh, search this out here today. And I'm, I'm thankful that you're here with me as we do this together on this, on this nasty uh, Sunday morning together here. Amen. All right. In Matthew chapter 24, we'll pick this up where we left off last week. Verse, verse 42. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what time of the night the thief was coming, <clears throat> he would have kept watch and would not have left his house be broken into. So you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Who then is the faithful and wise servant whom the Master has put in charge of the servants of his household to give them food at the proper time? It will be good for that servant for whom the Master finds him doing so when he returns. Truly I tell you, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But suppose that that servant is wicked and says to himself, My master is staying away a long time. And then he begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with drunkards. The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him, and at an hour he is not aware of. He will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the hypocrites, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. <clears throat> so this passage here, it, it, it talks about the time when the Lord returns, uh, and he uses a, a, a good picture of this idea about a master going away and then coming back to receive his kingdom. And so there's a couple of questions that Jesus asks us here in this passage. And the first one is, who is the faithful and wise servant? You know, who is that faithful and wise servant? And, and uh, Jesus answers that and he says, um, uh, this is the servant that the master finds doing his work when he returns. And so this is the first takeaway that we can get from this here today, that we want to be able to be people who will be found busy working for Christ when he comes back. Uh, and, and so it's all about this idea of preparedness and readiness uh, that we need to sort of focus on through this time of Corona, as well as for the days to come. We need to plan now on how we will live today and in the days to come. And so we want to be the faithful and wise servant, the one who is there. And then Jesus said um, he'll put him in charge of all of his possessions. There is a reward that Christ gives to those who are faithful. And I know many of you might say, well, that's heaven. Well, that's true. Heaven is given to you as a result of Jesus' faithfulness. Your faithfulness is what, <clears throat> is what uh, Jesus is talking about here as far as your serving of him. And he will give reward uh, and, and allow you to have charge of his possessions. Uh, in this. And so who is that faithful and wise servant? You know, some of the cults would let you think that their leader is that faithful and wise servant. And I want you to understand this. Listen, you and I, we all can be faithful and wise servants if we do what the master tells us to do. It's not some secret knowledge that you have to sort of get into. It's not a single cult leader that has the download from Jesus on what is and what isn't. It's not that special prophet that has a special word that only he knows from the Lord. I want you to get this. God gives his wisdom to all people who would ask on him. And it says he gives it to us um, willingly and he gives it to us with liberality. Uh, he doesn't hold it back from us. And so it's not this secret knowledge that's so important. Even in Pentecostal circles, man, a lot of times people are looking for that person with that secret knowledge. Beware of that kind of thing. Search the scriptures. Go into the word of God. Find out what the Lord is speaking to us. And then the second question that we ask, that's asked there, is who's, who is the, the wicked servant? Who's the wicked servant? Jesus said he begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with drunkards. And so this is the picture of someone who's living not with readiness, not with anticipation, not with preparedness for the Lord's return, but somebody who's living for self, uh, living for self rather than living for the body. 
um, you know, looking after self-gratification rather than after what's good for the body of Christ, what's good for Jesus, what's good for our brothers and sisters. And so the question would be then for us today, are you a faithful and wise servant or are you a wicked servant? I mean, you can't be both. Uh, you have to be one or the other. And so which one are you today? Are you faithful and wise or are you wicked? And uh, that's a great question for us to be able to sort of ask ourselves on that. Okay, so um, uh, in, in Paul gives us some instruction here in the book of Philippians, and he tells us to live, to live like Jesus. <clears throat> Starting with verse 3 of chapter 2 of the book of Philippians, he says this, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking at your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, Continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. So here in this passage that Paul talks about exactly what Jesus sort of lined up for us, this idea of living prepared, living ready, um, Paul gives us the example of Jesus to follow, uh, and, and the example he uses of Jesus is the example of servanthood. And so our, our lives, we are re we're ready, we're prepared for Jesus when we live lives of servanthood, when we live lives that serve others. Um, we should love and serve the ones that Jesus loved and served. You know, and who did Jesus love and serve? Well, first and foremost, he loved and served his own, but then he also loved and served all people. You know, and, and so the Bible tells us to, good, to do good to all, especially to those of the household of faith. So yes, we should love on our brothers and sisters in the Lord, but it's also important for us to love on other people too. Um, you know, we should be known by our love. In fact, uh, John goes on to tell us that um, they will know, Jesus, uh, John quotes Jesus by saying, they'll know that we are Christians by our love. And so that needs to be sort of the template that we walk out of, that we live out of on a daily basis. Um, this is part of our working out our salvation with fear and trembling. You know, sometimes we deal with each other, and sometimes when we deal with each other, it's difficult. Sometimes we have, it, it's hard to deal with our brothers and sisters uh, in the Lord. And, and it's important for us to do that, though. And that is what working out our salvation with fear and trembling is all about. Uh, it's all about dealing with each other. It's, it's keeping, keeping your Christianity in dealing with your brothers and sisters. That really plays hard uh, into our lives. And sometimes we do it by fear and trembling. Sometimes it's a difficult thing uh, to be able to maintain our relationship with the world around us and our relationship with Christ. But that's all part of it. Now, it's beautiful there. Paul goes on at the end of that passage and he says that God will be there not just to mandate us doing this, but I love how it says he works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. In other words, God will assist us in doing this. Yes, he wills it for us. He demands it, but he will be there to help us as well. Aren't you glad about that? Amen. Um, moving on now in this passage, uh, what we see through this is that finally the master will come. The master will come. It says on a day when he doesn't expect him and at an hour when he's not aware of uh, the master came and uh, it says it, it, and then the negative on that about the wicked servant is that he says he will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the hypocrites and uh, you know sometimes I, I don't know about you but there have been times when I've been cut to pieces by someone's words and I believe there's going to come a time when we face Jesus face to face we're going to have to answer for many of the things that we do um, and uh, but I'd rather be cut to pieces by him and still be his amen um, uh, and uh, and so uh, in this in this idea of living ready, living prepared, um, we need to live with wisdom uh, in this current world. And this is very important for us today uh, because there is such a shaking happening all around us. It seems like the fabric of society is coming out and coming unglued. And so we need to be people who have an answer today. And we know that Jesus is that answer. Amen. So we need to live with wisdom 
uh, in this current world and we need to make the most of every day uh, redeeming the time because we know the days are evil in our lives so in James chapter 3 it talks about this wisdom like how do we live as people of wisdom in a time when there's so much turmoil in this world verse 13 of James chapter 3 says this who is wise and understanding among you let them show by their good life by good deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom but if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts do not boast about it or deny the truth such wisdom does not come down from heaven but is earthly unspiritual demonic for where you have envy and selfish ambition there you find disorder and every evil practice but the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure then peace-loving considerate submissive full of mercy and good fruit impartial and sincere peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness wow that's just such a beautiful picture of what living with wisdom does in this world you know I mean it seems like every nobody knows what tomorrow holds nobody knows what's going on right now uh, and there's so much question and everything but listen as, as people of God we have a rock that we can stand on today we can appear to the people of this world like we know what's going on because Christ is with us listen I don't know what the future holds but I know who holds the future and Jesus is there uh, you know to give us that wisdom that we need to live each day you know what do we do when it seems like there's you know you hear this and that from someone and this and that from someone else and it's totally different and uh, and so what do you do well, we live with we live with the wisdom that God gives us in this time um, and remember this we will give account of ourselves to the master and so how we deal through this time we have to give an account to Jesus for you know the things that we take a stand for uh, the statements that we make whether we're people of faith or people of fear through this time whether we jump on you know this conspiracy or that conspiracy or we stay true to the Word of God we have to give an account to our master about this even how you live today you know listen if you're a parent you have children that you've been stuck at home with they're watching everything you do they're watching to see what kind of a person you are you know uh, whoever you're living with whoever you're with you can see what that person is made of now I want to be a person who's full of wisdom from God in these times so listen today be very careful of the things that you stand for today listen brothers and sisters as as your pastor as your friend as your brother today please be careful what you post on social media don't jump on things listen there's there's so many conspiracies remember it was only just a, a short while ago uh, every, you know there were so many things being posted about how 5g is really coronavirus so you don't hear any now I know that was squelched and everything listen I really don't know about those things I'm not gonna put my seal of approval on them what I want to put my seal of approval on is what the Word of God states and so be careful about what you stand for and I know that there are those who are who are up in arms about the freedom that you know um, that the governments of this world are taking from people and everything and I get that and yes it, it causes concern for us but but be careful what you what you get into on social media be careful what you put your time and your attention into because that's what being ready is all about you know um, I, I'm just amazed at how many Christians are up in arms about you know uh, about things that are happening politically in our nation and we forget that listen first and foremost we are citizens of the most high we're citizens of the kingdom of God you know um, and I'm not saying I'm not saying we shouldn't be part of this I'm not saying we shouldn't vote of course we should and we and, and as an American yes I'm concerned about things that are happening uh, around me but listen there's a higher there's a higher calling that we have been given other than the calling of as an American I, I thank God for the United States of America but I'm a citizen of heaven first and foremost you know eventually I'm gonna leave this country I'm gonna leave this place um, but the kingdom of heaven endures forever I'm gonna be part of that kingdom and so let's live accordingly for that you know it's interesting uh, you know uh, two and a half years ago, almost three years ago now <clears throat> uh, going about two and a half years uh, when my dad passed away um, you know and at his funeral um, the, the uh, it was a moving military tribute at his funeral and um, you know in that military tribute it's amazing I've done funerals many times and and you know when, when that color guard comes out and they fold that flag and they do that that uh, uh, gun salute 
You know, and it, it's, a, it's a moving thing. Uh, and I thank God. Listen, I love the United States of America. I thank God for the USA. Uh, it's the greatest country in the world, without a question. Uh, you know, and in this, in that time, they, uh, you know, the uh, the people that were there, they they did that gun volley uh, and uh, the three shots with the rifles, and um, they uh, saved three of the brass casings and gave me, and I have these. I keep these in my study, and it's a reminder of my dad's funeral. Um, and in that, you know, they gave them to me, and they they gave them to me in honor of God, uh, of country, uh, and of honor or community. And, uh, you know, so I, these things mean a lot to me. But listen, folks, um, they're not on an equal standing. You know, God is not on an equal standing with our country. God is not on an equal standing with my honor. God is, is supreme. He is the Lord. And so let's not lose sight of the fact that God is the one who is our sovereign today. He's the one that we worship. He's the one that we serve. He's the one that we follow after. I thank God. I'm not anti-American. Believe me, I love the United States. Um, and I was honored. I'm honored any time to take part in something like that at a funeral. And, and these, these three casings I keep in my study as a reminder of my dad's life and how he did serve. Yes, he did serve God and his, uh, and, and his nation and his community. Yes, he did it with honor. Um, but I'm thankful that today what really matters in my dad's life is he belonged to the king. He belonged to Jesus. He's with him today. You know, he's not even with his family. To, well, he's, he's with his family that went on before him, I suppose. Um, but let's keep those things in mind as we go through this time. You know, let's make sure that we keep our focus on where it really should be at this time. We have to maintain our Christian character at this time. It's not time for us to, to hide behind political things at this time. It's not time for us to hide behind conspiracies. It's time for us to stand upon the word of God through these days. All right. I understand that there's a lot of fear about what is going on with the freedoms here in the United States and all around the world. And yes, we know that what's happening is, is the world is setting up for the time that God calls the end times. And it's, we see it happening around the world. We see the, the stage being set for the governments of this world to grow in power and authority until that day when that man, the Antichrist, comes to power. We understand that to be the case. But folks, listen, I want to give you a message of hope today. I want to remind you that even though Big Brother will get bigger, I want you to remind you that the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. It doesn't matter what people rage and what they desire to do, what power they want to get. God is in control. God is in charge. All right? So let's remember, let's keep, keep ourselves ready and be ready for that appearing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In Matthew chapter 25, um, this parable of the ten virgins, um, the concept of readiness is really outlined in this parable. Verse 1 of chapter 25. We're moving on from chapter 24 of Matthew now to chapter 25. In verse 1 it says this, At that time the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins awoke and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there may not be enough for both us and you. Instead, go to those who sell and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. Wow, this is an incredible, powerful passage of Scripture, this parable of, the, of the, the ten virgins. And what we see in this is that all ten, all ten of these virgins were part of the bridal party. And it's a picture sort of of those who know of God, who, who are part of the kingdom of God. Um, but the call that Jesus gives to us is to be ready, to be ready, to be ready. In this we see that the bridegroom, he was coming, but he was delayed. 
And this delay, it says he took a long time to get there. Now it's interesting. My great grandpa, he used to preach about the coming of Jesus Christ back in the 1920s and the 1930s and the 1940s. And guess what? My great grandfather has long gone to be with Jesus all the way back in the 40s. He preached about the Lord's return. Since then, preachers have preached about the Lord's return. People have talked about it. How many of you have ever, when you were growing up maybe, or maybe you were just young in the Lord, and you came back to your house, and it seemed like, like everybody was gone? Like I remember as a kid, you know, getting, uh, coming into the doors, and you know, like the radio's playing, and the lights are on, and maybe there's something cooking on the stove, and I couldn't find my mom anywhere, I couldn't find any of my siblings. I thought maybe the Lord came back. You know, we expect that. But the reality is, He hasn't come back yet. But he is coming back. He is coming. You know, and so he's delayed. And we know why he's delaying. He's delaying so that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. We, we understand that he's, he's long-suffering towards us. You know, but the reality is he's still coming back. And in this, the bridegroom was delayed, but it, it, it took him a long time to get to where he was coming back. But he did arrive. He did come back. Uh, and, and at that time, then, not all were ready. Not all were prepared. Uh, and it's a sad picture of that. And the ones who were not ready weren't allowed to go into that marriage celebration. Now, I don't, theologically, we can take a lot of things and talk about that. But boy, listen, that, that should just make us sort of think. It should make us sort of think. And then finally, at the end of it, Jesus comes along and he says, therefore, keep watch. Now, and Bible scholars will tell you, when the Bible says, when Jesus says, therefore, you have to see what, what it's there for. And what it's there for is for us to make sure we maintain our readiness, our preparedness for his return. Preparedness shows attention and energy and thought. See, there's a reason why Jesus talks about this. Because it's so simple um, for us to keep our mind on the things that are going on around us here. But the word of God counsels us to set our mind on things above. And it's so hard for us to do that because the things that are right here take up so much of our attention and our energy. You know, listen, uh, you know, our flesh is like that. The people around us, the world is like that. You know, uh, you may be, you know, maybe your work has changed and everything, but those little envelopes with the windows still keep coming in your mail. The bills still keep coming. You know, the dog has to be left, has to be let out. You know what I mean? The cat's litter box has, has to be changed. There's always this idea that we have, we have, we don't have any issue focusing on the things below because they're always pulling at us. But Jesus is saying to us today, hey, listen, I want you to keep your mind on things above as well. It's not that the things below aren't important. <clears throat> you know, mom, when you're there with your children through the week, you better feed them. It's important. But don't forget the eternal things as well. Don't forget the heavenly things as well. Don't forget what's really important in this world. All right. Think about those things above. And uh, in Matthew chapter 25, there's three, pass three sections here. The first one is the parable of the ten virgins. It talks about personal readiness, that supply of oil. We need to be prepared. Then the second passage in there is the parable of the talents. It talks about personal service. We're supposed to be active. And then finally, the parable of the sheep and goats, uh, where Jesus talks to us about being compassionate. And so maybe we'll go through those next week. We'll talk about why be active. Why do we serve? What's the reason why we serve? But today, as we sort of finish this up here today, as we sort of transition, as we're going to go and we're going to be, we're going to sing a song here real soon. Uh, and this song is incredible. It talks about soon and very soon the King is coming. You know, we need to keep our eyes focused and be ready for His return. I don't know when it will happen. I don't know if it'll be this year or if it'll be in the twenties. Who knows? But I do know it's coming. You know, and like I said last week. You know, there's a lot of people that I preach this message to over the past three decades that they don't have to be ready for the Lord's return because they've gone to be with him. You don't know when that time is for you. You don't know when you're going to be when you're going to be called to go home. You got to be ready. You got to be prepared for that. You know, have your ticket taken care of through Jesus Christ. Amen. In Luke chapter 21, uh, verse 28, just before the second coming, Jesus says this. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. And so let's take our wisdom from that this morning before we transition into this last song that we're going to sing together. Number one, stand up. I'm not, I don't mean right there. Maybe you're, maybe you're you know, on, on your couch and you're in your pajamas. I don't really know and I don't really care to know. 
You know, some of you might be watching from bed. That's between you and whoever is with you. It's, I don't need to know. But stand up. You know, stand up. Stand up. Stand up for Jesus. You soldiers of the cross, that old song we used to sing. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13, we're told to stand. It says, therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then. Folks, listen, today should not be a day. I understand the world is shaking. Everything is shaking around us. But folks, we can stand on a rock that doesn't shake. Even though everyone else might be, the, the, you know, the, the sands are shifting underneath their feet. People are falling. People are stumbling. Folks, today we have a rock we can stand on. The rock of Jesus Christ. His, his way is sure in the midst of an unsure world. Stand for him today. Secondly, lift up your head. You know, don't, don't fall into the gloomy, gloomy, gloomy people that are on Facebook and social media and you hear people that are just complaining about this and complaining about that and how bad they have it. Listen, don't fall into that. Lift up your heads today. Put your chin up today. Don't have your head hanging down. Listen, we have a lot to be thankful for. In Psalm chapter 42, David writes to us here and he says, As the deer pants for the streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Verse 5, Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Listen, make that your call today. No matter what you're going through, no matter how bad the things are going around you, make your hope in Christ today. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Follow after him today. Lift up your head today. Lift up your head. Why? Because we know that our redemption draws near. Our redemption is drawing near, folks. Jesus is drawing near. Listen, the shaking of this world, the things that are happening in this world, it's just the world, the growth, the birth pangs that this world is experiencing, uh, anticipating the coming of Christ. May we be ready as well. May we be more in tune than the world around us to the fact that our redemption is drawing nigh. There's going to come a, a, a day when the trumpet is going to sound and the skies are going to split, and we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. I remember I had a book in my locker when I was in high school, and in that book it had that passage from, from uh, 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 First Thessalonians and from First Corinthians in there, and uh, one of my friends who did not really know Christ, he grabbed that book, and, and as it was, as, as God's plan was, he opened the book right to that page. And he stood there in the hall of Central. I still can picture it that day. You know, the, the dim hall of Central High School. And he read that passage and he said to me, he goes, you don't really believe that, do you? Yeah. I said, yeah, I actually do. Listen, we know, we call that our blessed hope. The Lord is coming. Are you ready? Are you living with anticipation? Are you living ready for his return? Are you prepared? Are you focused on the things of heaven as well as on the things of earth today? Let me pray for you. Jesus, I thank you for your faithfulness to us. I thank you, God, for your faithfulness to us as a church, for your faithfulness to us as individuals and in our families as well. You are good. You are an incredible, faithful God. And we thank you. Lord, help us to keep our mind focused on you through this time. Lord, to not jump on the bandwagon of complaining. Lord, to not jump on the bandwagons of conspiracies. Lord, not to jump on the bandwagon of protest. But Lord, we thank you that God, we are people of the Most High God, that we have a heavenly calling on our lives, a higher calling on us, that Lord, we can live as people of integrity and character through this time. Lord, we can be examples of wisdom, of godly wisdom in the midst of, a, of an unwise time. And Lord, we can follow after you, that you will be with us every step of the way. And Lord, you've called us to be overcomers through these days. And Lord, we can be faithful, even as you are faithful to us. And for this, we thank you and praise you. Now, Lord, perhaps if there are those here who have been shaken by these shaking times, Lord, to help them to experience the presence and the peace of Jesus Christ that surpasses all human understanding. Lord, would you guard their hearts and their minds 
through Christ Jesus. As we ask these things from you, you are more than faithful to do it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's sing this last song together as it talks about us looking forward to seeing Jesus and what it's going to be like that day.
want you to just go ahead and raise your hands right where you're at. I'd like to pray a blessing upon you today. Jesus, I thank you. Thank you that you are a faithful God to us. That, Lord, we know that you are still on the throne, that you are still in control, and that you are coming again for your people. Now, Lord, upon your people, would you bless them, O oh Lord, with the spirit of faithfulness, O oh God, with a spirit of power, not a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Would you fill them with all good things and allow them to stand up and shine out for you as sons of righteousness, as daughters of righteousness in this dark time, O oh Lord. Lord, I pray for provision upon people. Lord, I pray that God, that those who perhaps are suffering financially, O oh God, would receive, Lord, uh, uh, Lord, a blessing from you even this day, even this week, O oh God. Lord, for those who are discouraged, O oh God, or those who are lonely, Lord, I pray that you would find strength, that they would find strength in you, that, Lord God, you would be their strength and their power, and that you would break through on their behalf, O oh Lord. Lord, give us, a, give us a, a testimony, Lord, of your faithfulness so we can share with those around us and bless your people this day. Lord, cause them to be a blessing as well. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Lord, bless you. Have an awesome week. Thanks for worshiping with us today.